Well, this next blockbuster, directed by the one and only Steven Spielberg, is just filled with them. Uh, are you talking about maybe the 1981 movie Raiders of the Lost Ark? Well, it happens to be yes. <laughs> what? That's a definite win for Team Spielberg. Wrong. First of all, that didn't win any box office record. And second of all, the Indiana Jones story was created by none other than... Oh, Butterscotch. <laughs> George Lucas. And he was also an executive producer on the film. All right, I guess you're right on that one, Tooney. I guess we're going to have to call it a tie. Yeah, which means A New Hope is still number one, baby. But wait just a minute, Tooney. I think I've got it. This one is going to make you want to phone home. Bill, I am home. No, it's a reference from E.T., Tooney. E.T. was released on June 13, 1982, and it was directed by the one and only Steven Spielberg, pulling in a whopping $792 million at the box office. Ah, uh, Phil, E.T.'s almost worse than that shot. Oh, come on, E.T.? Yeah, he's so cute. Oh, you think he's cute? Oh, he's cuter than the Ewoks. <gasps> How dare you, Bill? Well, I thought this might happen, so I put the question on our social media page for our viewers to respond to. What? you got to be kidding me. You thought this might happen. This right here. You were able to somehow predict this totally organic, absolutely spontaneous rivalry we've been having? Let's see what our viewers thought, Tooney. Is it E.T. or the Ewoks? Who is cuter? The answer is... Ewoks. Ah! In your face, extraterrestrial. Uh, Go jump over the moon on your bike or something. I guess it's time for a break. That's very violent, by the way, Tooney. Yeah. But when we come back, the Lucas Spielberg showdown shall continue. <laughs> Welcome back to our summer blockbuster showdown between George Lucas and Steven Spielberg. Tooney, what's your next film? I'm gonna go with 1983's Return of the Jedi, baby. Uh, Tooney, George Lucas didn't even direct that one. Oh, well, but well, he produced it, so that counts. Yeah, well, let's see. That looks like it only gets you to number four. All right, well, uh, what's your next pick? Back to the Future, Tooney. Released July the 3rd of 1985 and directed by Robert Zemeckis, but produced by Steven Spielberg. Uh, yeah, come on, Tooney, you love that movie. Well, not today. And uh, you know what? That one doesn't even top Indiana Jones. Okay, would you rather have a car that's also a time machine or just a regular old spaceship? Uh, clearly a spaceship. Well, let's see what our viewers have to say about that. You asked them this question, too? Yeah, I asked them a bunch of questions, Tony. So shall it be a DeLorean or a Millennium Falcon? Let's find out. And the winner is... The Millennium Falcon. <laughs> In your face, DeLorean. Of course, Bill, the Millennium Falcon is the coolest ship of all time. All right, you're rubbing it in a little, Tooney. It's cooler than friendship. Oh, don't hey, say that. Right. Please don't say that. Let's watch a cartoon that's set in space, and it also has some time travel. From 1955, this is Guided Mouseile. Hey, we're back, and this has turned into quite the competition for the king of the summer blockbuster. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm talking about my king, G.L. George Lucas. Mm -hmm. All right, this is our final round, Tony. Don't tell me, is yours another Star Wars movie? Of course it is, Bill. Because in 1999, with G.L. George Lucas back in the director's chair, The Phantom Menace made $1 billion at the box office, baby! Well, Tony, this actually turns out to be a pretty close one. Oh! No way. Uh-uh. Did you hear me? I just said one billion. Yeah, I heard you say a billion, Tooney, but my final Steven Spielberg pick was the not-so-little film that was released on June the 11th of 1993. Do you happen to know what it is? Uh, Romy and Michelle's High School Reunion. What a fantastic guess, Tooney, but you're wrong. It's obviously Jurassic Park, Tooney, which made $1.1 billion at the box office. Wait, point one? You beat me by point one? Bill, that's basically a tie. No, Tooney, this point one equals a hundred million dollars, so I think it's pretty clear I'm the winner. Uh, all right, well, what about the viewers, huh? Uh, who's the better villain? The dinosaurs or Darth Maul? Again, Darth Maul or the dinosaurs? Are you sure you want to find out, Tooney? Of course I do, Bill. 
The winner is... Dinosaurs. Yeah. <laughs> okay. In honor of the winning film, how about a cartoon about dinosaurs from 1960? Here is Wild Wild World. Let's say dinosaur or dinosaur. All right. It's time to play time capsule trivia with Mr. Hoover. shark in Jaws? Was it A, Mr. Great White, B, Carl, C, Thrasher, or D, Bruce? You know, I had a goldfish once, but uh, I never gave him a name. Okay, time is up. If you guess, dun, 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 D, Bruce, you're correct. Uh, the mechanical shark who struck fear in the hearts of all beachgoers was named Bruce after Steven Spielberg's lawyer, Bruce Raymer. Bruce was 25 feet long. I'm talking about the fake shark, not the lawyer. <laughs> Bruce had to be built three different times because he kept malfunctioning. He caused so many delays on set, the crew started calling him mean names like Flaws and Great White Turd. That shark was a complete prima donna and just would not come out of its dressing room. Its dressing room happened to be the Atlantic Ocean. Well, folks, that's all we've got for today. We'll see you next time. Quizzer out! Well, tuners, we have been on a real journey today, talking about the origins of the summer blockbuster and discussing the films of two equally amazing filmmakers. Tune, you know, I'm actually a huge George Lucas fan. Yeah, and you know what? It is really hard not to like Jurassic Park, Back to the Future, <laughs> and even E.T.'s an okay dude. Yeah, it's still not Jaws, though. Oh, yeah. You know what? I just can't get past my shock aversion. Well, that's understandable, Tootie. I mean, you are prime prey. Prey? What? No, no, no. Shocks are just, like, super rude. I mean, they're always cutting you off in traffic when you're swimming in the ocean. Sharks do that? They don't even use their turn signal. Oh, they're the worst. Well, tuners, it looks like we got to the root of something today. So for now, it's bye-bye from Bill. And thanks from the tank. That's beyond rude. Why would they do that to you? Oh, I know. And they're always, like, tailgating you. You know, they're always, like, right up on you. You're like, come on, man. You like, back see? off. Yeah, back off. Right. If I put a, I put a bumper sticker on my tail. Yeah. Said, if you're close enough to read this, yeah. you're too close. Oh. Back off. Does it work? No, I floated away right now. Oh, it doesn't stick. The adhesive in the water just doesn't work. It doesn't gum up like no, it should. No, it should. Yeah. On the next, tune in with me. Hey, if you had your own pop, what flavor would it be? Victory. Or pizza, I guess. <laughs>